All right, this is part two. We're going to talk about ending the, the abuse cycle and not continuing to get into relationships um, with abusive partners. Um, I did a long, well, about a 30 minute video. I got cut off because I'm in a third world country, so my bandwidth stopped my video and I just published it anyway. So this is going to be about a five minute part two, just to summarize and recap. Um, so what we're doing is we're talking about solutions to a problem. The problem is you had a traumatic experience, a traumatic relationship, whether it's narcissistic abuse, BPD abuse, physical abuse, whatever it may be. Could have been from childhood as well, but we're, most of the time this happens with a, with a sexual partner. All right, You've been devalued in that relationship. So what happens is, to summarize, is it, and there's a greater, again, you want greater detail on this, see the other video. I'll link it in the, in the, uh, in the description. But, I mean, what, this, what, what essentially happens is, is your attraction triggers become damaged. Okay? Um, what triggers you to become sexually attracted to somebody has to do, is, is greatly um, tied in with your neuroreceptors, all right? The love chemicals or sex chemicals, okay? Uh, dopamine and oxytocin, for example, all right? So this concoction of chemicals reaction that happens in your body. When you're in an abuse scenario, especially with BPD or NPD relationships, it is a love bombing effect and you get an extreme dump of those chemicals, okay? Very extreme. And um, what it does is it, 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 you know, and then, of course, you're devalued in the relationship. So what that does is it conditions your neuroreceptors to want this extreme high again from a similar type of a partner, um, very much the same as a heroin addict or crack addict who is chasing that same high. So you start looking for people with dysfunctional traits of your previous partner. And then there's something that goes on in the unconscious mind as well, which is when you're devalued and on an unconscious level, um, you are seeking similar partners to undo that trauma. So you find a partner with the similar traits, but yet this time you overcome and you are seen as valuable by that person, and now, of course, you've un, un, undone that trauma. So there's a four-pronged approach uh, that you have to take to break this cycle, or what's gonna happen is you're gonna continue to seek out dysfunctional relationships. You're gonna continue to seek that high that you got from that BPD or NPD relationship, okay? And so how do we, what do we do about that? Um, well, first of all, before I get into the approach, you have to realize that being in a healthy relationship with someone has a, who has extreme arousal for you, and you have extreme arousal for them, but neither one of you are dysfunctional, okay, is far better in a far better and high and more sustainable of a high, okay, than the BPD or NPD relationship that with that high and those love feelings comes an extreme feeling of anxiety because you're waiting for that shoe to drop, okay? In a healthy relationship, the high is better, all right? So that's the good part. Now, of course, some guys, a lot of you men out there haven't really experienced genuine desire from a woman. I know that sounds weird, but it's the truth. You think you have, but you haven't. It's been mostly transactional. So when you, when you feel that BPD relationship, when you get in that BPD relationship, it, it feels like genuine desire. And in some cases, in some ways it is. And so that's where, where it really blows you away. But I promise you, okay, males and females, if you have genuine desire from a healthy partner and you desire them in a healthy way and you keep reaching new levels of intensity in that relationship without the dysfunction, the, the, the high and the feeling and all the neurochemicals and all that stuff is much better and much more sustainable, okay? So I promise you that, so you have that to look forward to. But anyway, so what we have to do is you, can't, you have to attack every part of the brain in order to get rid of this tendency to go for dysfunctional partners. All right, you have the logical part of your brain that reasons everything out and you have to attack it on a logical level, but that's not enough, all right? Most of the people that I talk to will know after coaching with me that they're logically what their problem is and what their pattern is, yet they continue to repeat the pattern. It's no different than someone who's addicted to heroin, who knows heroin's bad for them and they keep going back to heroin. You see what I'm saying? So we have to attack it on the logical level, but we also have to attack it on a 
unconscious level, okay, as well as a um, redirecting our hindbrain or uh, primal drives, okay. So the this approach will attack all three angles, and of course, dating healthy partners. That's the redirection of the hindbrain drive. All right, your hindbrain drive to mate with better partners and all that stuff and then all the things that go with that as a male or as a female and those differences when you you're, you're going to direct that energy into healthy partners instead of unhealthy ones that's the difference there but you have to we have to remove this unconscious bond and tie to want to be with a dysfunctional partner and overcome some sort of you know trauma that you've had in the past right um, so this is these are this is just what we have to do, and and then we have to you have to set yourself up or put yourself in a position to meet that partner, a new partner that is not only healthy but is going to trigger all of your hind brain drives and all of your sexual uh, drives, so that you have a high with the healthy person and not an unhealthy high with an unhealthy person. Okay, so four pronged approach. Um, First is gain knowledge, so that's books, you know, YouTube videos, my channel. Start researching what happened to you, all right? So if you were in some sort of abusive relationship, depending on the kind of abuse, you start figuring it out, you start learning, because knowing what happened, knowing about these types of relationships, knowing about these types of partners, is gonna help give you some closure, okay, and understanding, and also give you the understanding so you can recognize the patterns so you don't repeat them, all right? Um, then the second thing is to base, to basically get that knowledge out into your own understanding and words. This could be through talking to people, coaching, uh, going to cognitive behavioral therapy, okay, is a good one because you can kind of get, if it's a good therapist, you'll get the explanation of what's going on within the, in the abusive relationship from the, the professional and you'll be able to talk with this person in a, in a, in a therapeutic uh, environment you know, to be able to put these, this knowledge into your own words and your understanding in your own words. Journaling too, so writing, okay? But any number of those mediums are fine, but you have to, you're taking in the information, but you have to process the information and, and make sure you understand the information and, and, and at, at your own level, that you have a competence and understanding of that information. So that's all, and when you do that, that's gonna start filtering into your unconscious mind and start reframing some of your drives. All right, but that that's it's a, a lengthy process. So the other half of this is to attack the unconscious. That is through um, trauma-based therapies like EM, EMDR it comes to mind, or certain types of hypnosis. Um, I can do some of the hypnosis stuff over a coaching medium, but it take a licensed or qualified EMDR therapist to do actual EMDR. But these are all designed for people with PTSD, people with traumas. Okay, the idea is that you're bringing up those traumas that have been stored, okay, and the reactions and behavior reactions and emotional reactions to those traumas, and you're both reframing those and releasing them. So you have a trauma that happened, it's, it's impacting you in an unconscious and psychological way, and you're going to release that stuff through these types of therapies. But you can't just talk it out, you know what I mean, because... You have to get into that unconscious mind somehow, and that's where some of these techniques, like with hypnosis and EMDR, that's what, where that can help you, all right? And then the fourth thing is state management, so that is your meditation work, okay? Whether you do it in a religious context or not, that's completely up to you, but the idea behind that is that when you have these traumas and you have things that happen, okay, that will bring up aspects of those traumas or attractions even to something that you know is unhealthy what happens is your brain waves start doing some different things and they can get into that high beta brain wave state that anxious nervous uh, state you know and and you can start making decisions um, that are more reactive and erratic because of the state that your brain is in so the meditative work gets control over your emotions gets, gets control over that you know that oh I have to call my ex who's abusive you know like this 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 drive to go do stupid shit all right like it gets you control over that it gets you emotional self-control but it also gets you can part of that emotional self-control is controlling what's going on in your brain the actual brain waves so in a meditative state I can bring anxious brain waves high beta 
to an alpha state or even down to a theta state, which is uh, like pre-sleep. Okay, so by practicing bringing your brain waves down and getting control over your emotions, now you can start controlling yourself when you have that urge to go and do something stupid with your drug at it, your drug of choice, which is your ex or this BPD or NPD um, dysfunctional person or this abusive person. You see, you you've you've trauma bonded with that person, so that these med this meditative work can help you get that self control that you need. All right, and so that's the four pronged approach to attack every aspect of the brain at every level. Um, there's two other points to this. One is you have to treat yourself like a drug addict, okay? Because this person it is literally like an addiction to drugs. It just happens to be drugs that you're producing inside your body, okay? So you're producing neurochemicals and having a neurochemical response to this relationship dynamic that is both harmful and addictive, that is both stimulating and, you know, negative at the same time. And so it's no different than getting high. And so you have to, what happens, it, it, there's no, there's unfortunately no rehab facility you can go to for a bad relationship, but what happens if you have a drug problem, right? People go to rehab. What does that do? It takes them out of the environment, right? So you have to take yourself out of the environment as well. You have to block your exes. You have to, you know, give yourself no option to get that high or that, that, that dopamine hit from that person. Okay, and then you're going to feel a ton of pain and you're going to want to run back and do dumb things. And that's, that's, that's you going through, um, whatever you call it, that, the, that's your, uh, but that's you going, that's your rehab process. Okay. And so withdrawals, that was the word I was looking for. So that's you going through that withdrawal process, but you have to go through it. If you're fresh out of the relationship, particularly, but even if you're not fresh, you have to put yourself in an environment and situation situations where you're around healthy people don't allow unhealthy bpd or npd people around you that you're attracted to where you're going to be uh dedicating parts of your life and your energy to these people because it's just it's the same as dabbling with drugs or whatever when you have a drug problem or dabbling at with alcohol when you have an alcohol problem you can't do it you're not there yet where you can be in a room and be around these people because you haven't you haven't released the trauma yet and you haven't gotten a hold of this addiction to toxicity yet okay because it is an addiction it's an addiction to toxic relationships whether you were addicted before your abusive relationship or not doesn't matter you are now <laughs> okay so you have to treat it like that and then the last thing is you got to give it time okay so like emdr meditation even talk therapy you know this stuff you're not going to just feel better tomorrow you might okay but then you're going to relapse things are going to come back all right. It takes a series. It takes a lot. It takes time to get rid of this trauma, release it. And here's the thing. Here's the good part about it, though. The good news. Well, number one is it, it, it takes time, but it doesn't take as much time as you think. All right. It's not going to be 10 years of work. We're talking months, not years. So that's the good news. If you're doing the right shit and you don't keep relapsing and you know going back to old behavior patterns of doing stupid things, it's only a couple, it's a couple months, it's a few months rather than a few years, all right? And, and, and I can't predict the exact amount of time. It's going to depend on the person, all right? But then the next thing is um, um, the other part of uh, the good news is that it, it, it's, it's kind of astounding. Once you release this trauma, you'll notice people in your lives or things that you would be like, like, so, so you'll notice, for example, if you were attracted to BPD chicks, like chicks that were just crazy and high emotion and, and really toxic, you'll see BPD chicks like on video someplace or in person or whatever. And you'll notice that you feel repelled from that dysfunction. You'll notice a big difference and you'll be able to go, oh, wow, you know, I used to be attracted to that, you know, this person who's dysfunctional, I used to be attracted. Wow, I'm not attracted to that. In fact, I, I'm, I'm repelled. I'm kind of disgusted. I don't want this person around me. I'm, I want to keep a distance from this dysfunctional person. You see, that's how you know you're in a good space. That's how you know that you're not, you're not, that your addiction is over with. And that now your, your internal response is, holy shit, I don't want to go back 
to that. I'm so much happier and better now. I don't want to go back to that dysfunctional thing. When you see dysfunctional potential, we'll say potential partners or somebody, an attractive person with dysfunctional traits that you would have maybe gone for before in your reaction now though, is I'm not interested in that. Not only am I not interested, but I'm repelled by it. That's how you know. That's your benchmark for knowing whether you're in a good place and a good spot with having overcome this trauma from your abusive relationship, all right? But until you get to that spot, you, you again, control your environment. Do not allow people like that anywhere near you because your propensity to just relapse and, and do dumb things with that person or allow yourself to be used by that person, whatever it may be, even just having them around is gonna trigger old feelings and thoughts that were not productive for you, all right? So, okay, I said it would be five minutes and it's like now we're up to 16, but that's fine. Uh, this is a recap of all that stuff. That is, the, that is the solution, that is the answer, okay? Maybe there's other answers out there. Maybe you can overcome trauma by doing some different things. I can't promise that, but I can tell you this, that this route, that this four-pronged approach is going to give you, from my experience, from what I've seen, this is going to give you uh, the, the a propensity for success. This is going to make you successful. I can't see you not being successful eventually at getting rid of these the trauma bonds, getting rid of your attraction to dysfunctional people, and start opening yourself up for functional relationships. I can't see... You know, you not being able to heal and get to that place um, if you're doing these four things I mentioned and doing them with, you know, the effort and work that they take. Okay, so this is the answer. You want to know what the answer is? How do I get a healthy rat? This, I just gave it to you. 17 minute video and gave you the answer. Okay, you have the answer now. But so what? Okay, we all have answers. You have to execute. Okay, you have to execute. You have to do the action. You have to do the work. Because if you don't do the work, it doesn't matter if you have the answers. You see what I'm saying? All right. Subscribe. You need to send this one to people. I know you guys don't forward my shit, but you need to start doing it now. Okay? Send this one. Because every, there's so many people who have been in dysfunctional relationships and who are attracted to dysfunctional people. And they're not able to get into healthy ones. There's so many guys out there, ladies that you pass up that are great, would be great mates for you, but you, your attraction triggers don't respond to them like they should because you're attracted to create like dysfunctional assholes, right? Some of you dudes, a lot of you dudes, it's the same thing. You're just attracted to crazy hot and there's hot and not crazy and then you just ignore her or don't even, whatever, don't pursue it because your attraction triggers are damaged, okay? And so there's so many of you guys out there, you guys should be able to forward this shit on to like 10 of your friends, all right? So please forward the video, please subscribe, help me help more people, all right? There's a lot of people unhappy out there in their relationships and their dating lives and I have answers for them and we can help them out. And you can help me help them with your subscription and with, you know, sending my information to other people, all right? Thanks for tuning in. Take care.